Bear recording. Okay, wonderful. All righty. Oh, that's a great place to start, isn't that? Right at the end. Maybe maybe we'll just finish right today and we'll just go ahead and uh, be done. Okay. Let's see what it's doing here. Okay. So this is the 2025 Tier 1 Zoological Application Workshop webinar. Um, this includes um, everything you can probably think of, but if I leave anything out, please, please let me know. The agenda, we just did introductions, which is wonderful. We'll spend a minute um, on ZAP in general, and then zoological um, and Tier 1 overviews. Um, Samantha. Eligibility. Sorry, um, are you sharing your screen? Yeah, I don't think we can see it. At the end. No, really? Oh, I'm so sorry. Let me let sorry. me try again. Share. Can you see my screen now? We can yeah. see your screen now. Yes. I'm so sorry. Gosh. Okay. So we all know where we are. We're on the right plane. We're not taking the right flight, wrong flight to Aruba for the weekend, right? Just kidding, that doesn't happen anymore. Back in the day though, right? It did happen occasionally. All right, uh, agenda, we'll do introductions, which we just did. Um, talk about ZAP overview, as well as the tier one zoological. Spend a minute on eligibility and the timeline. It's a similar timeline each year, but we'll spend a minute on it. We'll talk through a little bit of Zoom grants and then your additional data sheet um, as part of the application demo. We'll talk about a few ways to stay connected and some happenings coming up, and then we'll work through questions. Alrighty. Here's the ZAP team. Um, you're all familiar with Daniel, who has been here for some time uh, since 21. Uh, myself, Samantha, who has been here since uh, 22. And then we had Kelsey join us in 23. Kelsey's working on the program uh, as an impact manager and will soon be contacting me if she hasn't for all kinds of things that she's gonna be doing. That's pretty exciting for the, the program. Impact manager role is to help with um, mostly tier twos, but also tier ones and zoologicals, as well as potential grantees to tier or applicants to tier two. Um, doing education workshops, capacity building, uh, lunch and learn sessions. And so you'll see a lot of that from Kelsey. Uh, she came to us from Salt Lake City's Art Council. So that's pretty wonderful. You all know most of this, but I do have to um, chat through it because it's a very important year, as you know, this year. Uh, we launched in 97, um, as you know, the sales and use tax collected. Um, in Salt Lake County that um, one penny from every $10 goes towards the ZAP program. Um, last year, we were able to um, fund, which is our mission, Tier 1, Tier 2, and Zoological at $26 million, and 237 organizations were funded last year. That's the largest number of organizations we have ever funded in the ZAP history. The most applications we received for Tier 2 and the most new applicants received and approved for tier two. Um, and that equals a little over 5 million attendees in Salt Lake County to those 237 organizations, events, gatherings, and happenings. This year in November, there is a voter ballot initiative happening um, to renew um, in the Salt Lake County area for the next 10 years, ZAP funding. So you will see that on there. You're probably seeing us already talking about it and doing a lot of promotion. If you have any questions that you want to get engaged in on that um, in different ways, uh, let us know because we're doing a few things. Um, you may have been contacted by us recently um, to provide information related to um, the Chem Gardner Policy Institute at the University of Utah is doing an impact study on ZAP and ZAP's history. Um, and we will be presenting that in May. So hopefully um, you all know that you can use that um, study and report and the metrics that come out of it to promote uh, arts and culture in the county, uh, your organization, ZAP, ZAP as a community. So um, that's just one way that we're trying to help with the initiative to educate folks is through an impact study that will be coming out next month. 
Alrighty, Mission Enroll, as you all know, Salt Lake County is the Arts and Parks program is to enhance resident and visitor experiences through arts, culture, and recreational offerings. I recently learned from Utah Cultural Alliance that um, a good number of their users that look for um, activities to do on Now Playing Utah are actually from out of state, a much larger number than you might think, because as they come to Salt Lake or Utah, they want to plan events and functions and they use Now Playing Utah uh, quite a bit. So that's uh, good news that um, we're able to do those offerings, not only to residents, but visitors as well. Fulfilling our purpose, um, I think saying a three legged stool is an old school term, but, but um, I'm going to use it anyway. Um, there's three bullet or four bullet points here that talk about fulfilling our purpose, but primarily um, what we do um, is we want folks to know we provide. Oops, my gosh, excuse me. Go back. There we go. Um, we provide um, <laughs> public awareness right here. Number two, increase public awareness of value. That's a lot of promotional efforts. You see, we promote our grantees. We're on social media. We promote the program. We promote Salt Lake County. Um, the third, fourth bullet, third bullet point you'll see talks about that we collect the tax. And we don't really count that as part of our three legged school. That's more of a financial thing that the, the county does at a different level. Um, and then uh, the fourth one, this is where Kelsey's role comes in and it's providing support for the organizations through um, capacity building. And then we'll go back up to the first bullet point, which is probably one of the most critical and why we're here today, our bread and butter, which is our grant making. Um, on an annual basis for small organizations, large organizations, and so much more. This is how it's broken up. <clears throat> if we move on to uh, talking about uh, greater is um, tier one, parks and rec, zoological, and tier two. Um, this is how the pie is broken out by statute and county code of who gets what. You'll see that um, between tier one and zoological, a pretty good part of the pie is towards some great organizations that really reach a lot, a lot of folks. Does and doesn't fund uh, for tier one. This is a little bit more um, of, a, of a not so much so important um, because we fund so many things from tier one. It's, as you know, we we're unrestricted funding that you can use it for your operations. I think most organizations do use it for for that, for rent, for utilities. Um, for licensing uh, royalties and so on and so forth. So um, the things that aren't funded are, are pretty, pretty obvious. Like if you look at the very last bullet point, uh, things that have high liability, like radio, rodeos, fireworks and parades, even those, those are part of Utah's uh, cultural fiber. Um, those are things that we don't, we don't grant. If you have any questions about what we do fund or, or don't fund, please let me know. This is what our advisory board um, role is, their purpose and, and their structure. Um, so they um, they really do um, and are here to build organizational capacity through funding um, and with tier one stability and provide um, predictable support, as you know, once you're in tier one and zoological. Um, for the most part, there's not a lot of changes that occur, uh, but from time to time there are changes, but it is predictable support. Um, the board role is not a governing board. Uh, it's not an authority board, but it's actually more if you could view it as a review committee. Um, they review the applications very much in detail. They come out and do site visits with you. Um, and then, of course, they make formal recommendations to the county council who makes the funding decisions um, from those recommendations and makes them final and approves them. There's 18 disciplines. Uh, there's one lead reviewer. Um, we, they all go out and do their own work um, on the applications and site visits. And then we have an all day meeting that we convene in September after those are done over the summer um, to make all the final decisions. You will be receiving from me an email um, right in the early part of June, um, inviting you or introducing you to your lead reviewer. So just like it was last year and the previous year in early June, I'll email you, do an intro to whomever your lead reviewer assignment is, um, and then you'll be able to start talking to them over the summer about inviting them to come to different events. Um, I will take a pause here and say that um, we conducted a focus group 
um, with 10 of the 25 tier one and zoological organizations um, at the end of January and received some excellent, excellent feedback. Um, a couple of things that they had shared with us is that they would like the reviewers to have a longer period of time, maybe up to a year, um, to spend with that organization to get to know them, have more opportunities than just dropping in for an hour and meeting with staff or just coming to a board meeting. Um, we're working some things out to start next year cycle to be able to provide six months instead of the three months in the summer. Um, we think we can do six months of the organization having a chance to know their lead reviewer and invite them to things for, for half a year. So that was really great feedback. We also received feedback about the board as well as kind of a mystery. What does the board do? What is their role? What is their timeline? How do they look at things? And so we'll be sharing some things um, uh, towards the end of the application being open and the beginning of the summer, just trying to help provide more information about the board role, um, improving site visits and some things like that. Uh, one document we're gonna create is kind of a guide of what to expect on a site visit and ideas for doing things on site visits, not only for you, the organizations, but also um, for the board members, for them to kind of have a better idea of, okay, I'm gonna ask these questions um, and things like that. So both sides are more aware of that review that they do and inclusive of the site visits. So we're pretty excited about that. Okay. It's a seven member board, um, two of which come from the Utah Division of Arts and Museums. That is Vicki, we all know Vicki, um, as well as Johan Jacobs um, are the two representatives there. Um, we do evenly distribute um, by council district. There's six council districts. Um, oh, someone lost sound. Is every anyone else lost sound? Or is sound okay? I can I can still hear you. Okay, okay. Um, and then uh, one member from the Arts and Culture Advisory Board for our division. Oh, great. Looks like we've got sound. Thank you, everyone, for applying. I really appreciate it. Um, we just have one issue, one person having sound issues. I apologize for that. Um, anyway, the um, Arts and Culture Division Advisory Board person is Don Tingey. Um, I think several of you had him review you for the first time last year, um, and everyone pretty much knows Johan and Vicki. Okay. Alrighty, moving to eligibility. We all know these things. Uh, Got to be a 501c3 nonprofit status in Utah. Uh, the three year average of QEs is 390,000, uh, which was bumped up last year, as you know, for the first time in quite some time since before COVID, we bumped that up. Um, I don't see us bumping it up for a little bit of time. It'll probably sit at 390 for a minute. Uh, you have, must have a main office in Salt Lake County. Really, it usually says main office or headquarters um, in Salt Lake County. Uh, submitted three years of audited financials. We've all done that. Um, must have an arts botanical cultural organization. We're all aware of that. And then receiving tier two funding for the last three years. So um, people sometimes have questions about this, but um, it really is you need to have the most last, most last, the most recent three year period you need to have been approved in the tier two category to apply for tier one. Okay, these are the categories that we ask the board members to um, review your application, as you know, and in your application questions are set up like this as well. But artistic and cultural vibrancy is, is a very big one, it's 30%. The other two really large ones are public benefit and outreach and governing board, even though they're, they're quite different, um, they do hold both 20%. The last two is organizational capacity and financial health. Um, this gives the basics for you um, to be able to really get um, a, a good score, hopefully. But if you ever need help going into some of these details while you're answering your questions or hosting a site visit, let me know because I do provide this slide specifically to the board members to look at and think about when they're coming to visit you. And as they look at their application, they may be considering these categories here. Not so much the financial health, as you know, our CPA pretty much takes care of that. But, but primarily the, the four categories, occasionally you'll get a financial question, but, but really it'll come from the four other categories. Um, here's some testimonials we received last year, um, which we're excited about. We do this every year, as, we, as you know. 
um, we present to council your funding recommendation or your funding recommendations from the board for your organizations each fall. And when we do um, each fall, um, we provide testimonials as well of talking about the impact specifically. And so this is kind of a fun one um, that we have from uh, Wasatch Community Gardens. So we're talking about supporting their youth and adult garden education programs and community events. And then they list some actual specifics, which we love. Uh, the annual spring plant sale, tomato sandwich party, which is huge, and love local holiday market. And then hail, you can see hail really talks about um, that they really appreciate having Zap, um, and they really feel like it, it makes their theater world class. So that's great. Um, these are the statistics that we gave council last year, and um, come from your additional data sheets um, and from our CPA's calculations. So um, when you turned in your 2024 application, you provided 22 data. Um, and so this is it here on the right side, talking about the number of events, um, in person, um, and then the job associated, which is pretty exciting to have um, the, the 20, almost 2,300 full-time and part-time jobs plus the 16 for the 616 and the 1850 and volunteers and contract jobs. So that's great. And then um, one of my favorites is the QE when people see the QE of, of nearly, uh, you know, 100 million dollars spent by organizations this really gets folks excited about the economy all righty timeline we've all seen this from zap and um it is pretty close to this um your deadline this year as you know is friday may 30th um so let's go to get those in by that time the spending of summer, June through September, and your lead reviewers will be contacting you to come out and visit, and they'll be looking at your applications online as well. September and October is when um, the advisory board finishes up its final recommendations and sends them to a council to approve, review, et cetera. As soon as that's done, we're already working to get contracts and invoices out so people can get um, taken care of for the next year. So. Um, you should be getting your contact contract um, for November, and we usually have the deadline November, December. We really try and hold a tight timeline on those contracts so we can process um, in the payments area. Um, so you'll have a deadline of usually two weeks to get those contracts signed. I know sometimes going to Zoom grants and signing them all is a little complicated. It's probably one of the areas I do with the most tech support for the Zoom grants. So if you have any issues at all signing or you get frustrated, please, please call me. It happens a lot. So, so don't worry about that if you need to call and get support for that. This talks about it a little bit more specifically. Typically you'll sign it this year in November. Um, you'll receive your first payment in June. Um, remember when you receive your first payment in June, it's three months worth of payments. It's April, May, and June. So you'll get that bulk payment in June and then July through February, you'll receive a regular monthly payment. In March, you will not receive a payment. And then in April, you'll receive, um, I, I probably shouldn't see it, say it this way, but the last three years I've been here, it's kind of a balloon payment. It's that final payment. Um, and the reason it's different than the monthly payment, as you know, is based on um, the taxes that come in and they reconcile those right before they make payments. Um, and so typically that last payment in March, sorry, in April is, is pretty significant. And then your final payment will be in April 26. Like I said, that will be kind of the larger um, balloon payment, if you will. Okay, I'm gonna stop sharing for a second. And I wanna see that was a lot of information thrown at you before we actually get into the application. Does anybody have any questions about the basics? Zap, the board, reviews. Oh, Derek. I have a question. I just uh, had never noticed before that the Utah uh, Arts and Museums selects two of board members. Is that a new thing or? Um, not that I'm aware of. Um, in the statute, the um, in the county code, I don't think it's in the statute. It must be in the county code. Uh, it's county countywide code for ZAP is 1031. I'm happy to provide that, but it does say um, two um, from there come in, um, which I thought was interesting for a seven member board. 
Um, and then one of them comes from the arts and culture division. So three of the seven are government. Um, okay. Yeah, I'm just curious. I never noticed that before. So yeah, yeah, I, I'm trying to based on the focus group. People are wanting to know more of the details of the board um, and the review process. And so I'm just trying to provide extra info. Any other questions like Derek's that might be helpful? Okay. I don't see anyone. All right. I'm going to go ahead and share my there's, screen again. Oh, there's, I hear someone? There's, there's one. Sorry. This is. Oh, yeah. yeah I know. There's one in the chat from okay. Natalie, um, it, it talks about the early payment feature issues. I don't know if we want to cover that now or we can cover it um, later. It, are we talking about um, payment early works? Early pay, yeah, the payment works yeah. issue. Yes, okay. Um, I'd like to say payment works till towards the end, but I think that's an excellent, excellent question. And this is a great group to speak to about it. Um, as you know, the county moved platforms to pay um, grantees to a, a system called payment works and there's some interesting kinks in payment works that we've had to have them do some exceptions for zap payments and so i'd love to save that towards the end but we really do need to hit on it um, because there have some hiccups been happening and we don't want our grantees to to experience any more of those hiccups so yes i'll do it towards the end daniel if you'll bring that back up do not let me forget please great question I'm going to go ahead and share again. Okay, this is an older application. It's from tier two, but basically this is what it looks like when you first log in. Um, I think all of you um, know that and can um, relate to seeing this for years now, well, since 2016, um, what it looks like when you log in. Um, if you do not see a title on here that says, ZAP 2025 Tier 1 plus zoological application, you're going to need to go to the website first. So go to our website first. Do you remember there's two steps? Go to the website first and grab the Zoom Grants link for you to log in. And then that will put the 2025 program into your Zoom Grants. You'll have Zoom Grants open at the same time that you go to the website. And that'll let you see the 2025 application there for you. Um, I did go in there already and it looks like we've got about, uh, I think it was 11 or 16 grantees who've already went in there and they're already noodling around in the 2025. But is anybody, as we get into Zoom grants, does anybody have any issues um, starting out with um, getting into Zoom grants and logging in? Does anybody have any issues? Samantha, this is Janet yeah. Fine. I, mm -hmm. I just have a question about the revised QE worksheet. Oh, and yeah. Where that is located, if that is located yeah. in Zoom Grants Let's log and in. where. Okay. Okay. So this is what Thank mine you. looks like. So I'm just, unfortunately, uh, just going to go through this portal really quick. Mm -hmm. Okay. So here's mine. I can see for you. So you can see the title right here. 2025 application. You should all have that and use that. Um, like I said, if you have any issues going to the website first to grab that link to have it pull that program so you can view it in Zoom Grants, let us know. Okay. So if we go into, let's just set up really quick. Um, in your tabs, I know your screens look a little bit different than, than mine does, but um, in your, I think it's a document, I can't remember. <clears throat> Daniel, you remind me, I totally can't remember where the, to pull the documents up. I guess I should go into an application. It's it's in your settings tab. Oh. Yeah, but I just don't want to go into a blank when I was hoping to go into someone's, but I don't want to pull anyone's up. Oh, um, okay, we'll go ahead and get some, show you some assistance to log in. Uh, I'll have Daniel do that. Daniel, do you mind pulling up some grants after I get done with this portion? Um, and I can do and, a brief demo. Yeah. yeah. Okay. So in your documents tab, you're going to have this list right here. Okay. This one right here is the template. So it is the 2025 template. What we have changed about it this year 
is we have raised the salary cap. The salary cap used to sit at like, I don't know, something like um, 97 to 80. Um, and so now you'll see what we've changed in here. Most of it's the same, see? The 390,000 is listed right here um, from changing it last year. I'm gonna say the salary cap part, I can't remember where it's out. But oh, I changed it in so many places, I cannot remember. Down to the, right here. So under the non-qualifying um, definitions is a good way to look at it, is we have increased salary cap to 109,620. We didn't change any questions in here. We updated just the dates. Um, maybe some language was had an error or something. We fixed those things. But you'll see that um, that's a document template uh, right here that's got this name right here. So um, that's where you can find the new QED. I'm glad you asked. Jenny, do you mind? Are you ready if I go ahead and show? If you go onto the website first and click on the link and move over, do you have a second to do that? Yeah, totally. Do, okay. uh, do you want me to take over the screen? Yeah, sharing? I'm going to stop sharing. Go ahead and, and let's let's just go back, take a step back, and go ahead and show the login part of this. Okay. All right. So I'm going to share my screen, everyone. Can everyone see that? Yep. Awesome. So. Um, the first step that I do want to uh, remind everyone about is that before clicking on the link for the application, make sure that you're already logged into Zoom Grants. Um, because if you're not and you do click on the link uh, that's on the website, it's gonna ha it's gonna send you through a loop being like ask you to log in, and then it'll lead you to your page. And yeah, so just make sure you log in first. Um, but you'll go to the Salt Lake County Zoo Arts and Parks website, um, just SLCO. Uh, zap is you dot org um, and you'll go to grants. And then after the general is apply for tier 1 and zoological funding, you'll click this and then it'll bring you to the tier 1 page and it says access the 2025 application. Um, so you'll click this link. It'll say that it's open You can click the apply button here. And then that brings you to the page that Samantha had up before um, as the example. So you'll read through all these instructions and everything, um, but this is when you'll start your application here. And for the 2025 um, QE worksheet, um, it'll be uh, within your, let's see, um, resources. All right, so you click that resources button um, and you can see all of these resources pop up and it's just right here. So you can click that link and it'll download the QE worksheet for you. Um, Did that step back help or, or do we want to do that one more time? Are there other questions around just getting into that first um, <clears throat> program for 2025 the first time? And then finding that new community sheet. My my question about the QE worksheet is, if we received a revised QE worksheet for 2024, mm -hmm. and we need to insert that worksheet into our 25 template, um, where does that revised QE worksheet come from? Did, did you send that to us via email? Or is it in Zoom grants in our 24 application? Where um, would so, that, be, that be located? So great, <laughs> great question. I emailed everybody at the end of the season after you had your um, recommendations. It was an email that came from Zoom grants and it sent you your comments from the board, um, your uh -huh. QE revised worksheet and your financial health test. Uh, okay. kind of checklist responses. So um, that came approximately one. When did but I... end of the season, but I actually inserted them into your 24 application. Oh, so if you need okay. any help getting into or getting access of your 24 application, let us know because I did put the board comments in there and the revised um, 
Okay. How do we get that? Uh, Janet, can you so, pull up somebody's particular application? So, so um, you you're show them in twenty four. Yeah, so if you were in the 24 application, like it's the same tab as this, where it's the documents tab um, at the bottom, it doesn't show it right now because there's not one in here, but um, it says admin documents and, and the link is there. So okay. you'll have your review vice QE worksheet. So go in last your... year's. Exactly. Go into yeah. last year's. Okay. Yeah, last year's and then um, under that documents tab is where it's uh, Samantha had uploaded it. I um I'm gonna see if I can pull one up really quick so you can actually see what a screen looks like to have one. Um, I hope folks don't mind if I just quickly pull one up. Um, uh, let me go at the bottom. Okay, here we go. I'm gonna show this one so we can so we can have some share. I'm gonna share. Is that okay, Daniel? Mm -hmm. Yeah. So I'm going to just, I just pulled up Hale's application just really fast. Um, and um, you'll see this is what it looks like um, under all your documents here. See where it says administrative documents. Oh. I sent them. The we lost sharing. Oh, it, your, your screen isn't shared yet. Oh, I don't, it won't let me give me one second. Let me try it again. It's not. Are you out, Danielle? Yeah, I'm out. Okay. How about now? There we go. Okay, great. So, um, here's your documents. You know, you all submit these things. It looks just like this, but go towards the bottom right here. Where it says administrative documents, right? This is where you want to be. So, last year, it looks like I sent them around the 23rd of October. So here's your QE revised worksheet. Here's your findings from the CPA. Everybody got those. Uh, so you'll want to go into your 24 application and find those. Okay. Other special questions as we get into the application um, and talk through it regarding getting logged in the first time and seeing your 2025 application or accessing your 2024 application to see that old information, older information, whether it's the QE worksheet or just the just the language you put in that application. Any questions? I'm sorry, one more question for me. Yeah, now. yeah, no, go ahead. Um, so I am in my 24 application and I'm in looking at the administrative documents and there's no revised QE worksheet there. So can I assume that then that means that we had no revisions? <laughs> Yes, you can. <laughs> you okay. can. You okay. can. You can. Uh, some people have them just one year. Some people have them not at all. Some people right. have had them for the last two years, and so they really need to go back two years um, to see those. But uh, I think this last year will be fine. I think our CPA will be fine with that. We just need to do it going forward. Um, that she has to kind of refine that information and say, okay, this was revised. Now I have to start with a different number because they started with a different number this year. So yes, if you did not have one sitting in your box, you don't worry about it. I right. would have given it to you. Okay. For We've clarification, got... sorry, excuse me. Uh -huh. For clarification, though, the revised QE worksheets have already been uploaded as the out for the 2025 application, right? They're a part of that document. For uh, the current QE worksheet, you know, so, the, you know, when you complete the worksheet and you have the pre the historicals already at the bottom of the tab, the tabs across the bottom on the, yeah. the application, that is already the up the revised QE worksheet and yes. not the one you submitted, correct? For 24, yes. But the 25 application mm -hmm. doesn't have the revised worksheet? Uh, okay, so we, we're talking about two different versions of revised. Let's make sure we're on the same page. So um, some people did calculations last year in their QEs that our CPA revised. She fixed them. I sent that at the end of last year your original QE sheet, but with her revisions within it. She's highlighted them. You can't miss them. But the QE template for 25 is just blank. 
It is not your organization. Right. Okay. It, okay. Just blank. Yep. You just go in and do your thing. Um, but you need to look at your 24 revisions if you have them. Did I help with that question? Yes. Thank you. Okay. 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 Yeah. I didn't put the, I didn't put the old QE's worksheets into 25. I left them in 24 and did blank ones for 25. Okay. Other questions around um, those two areas? Otherwise, we'll just kind of start getting into um, the application for 25. Okay. I don't see any hands. I don't see anything new on the chat. Daniel, am I missing anything? Um, oh, there we go. Uh, I saw a comment. Let's see, Lisa. Lisa Sewell, I'm not seeing the button with the attachments like the QE worksheet that you showed on the screen. Is it because we haven't started the application? Um, at the top of the page, there's a, a button that says resources. You may need to click that resources button before the attachments appear. Um, and then Susan's question. Okay, I think I think we're good. Okay, and if you don't see what, what Daniel just directed, let us know. Yeah. Happy to help. Okay. I'm going to share my screen again. Um, just one second. Okay. Okay. So your eligibility questions look the same. We didn't change almost anything in these questions um, around it, except we did change a little bit of the language around these three data questions. You know, these three data questions about your address. This is more for tier twos by far than tier ones, um, but we just edited it slightly, um, but we're just trying to find out where people do their work um, and um, find out where they reside. Those are basically what those three questions are for, is for data purposes, for pulling metrics and so on and so forth. But other than that, we didn't change a whole lot. We tried to change number seven to be more clear. If you had a chance to speak with a community leader for one minute to explain your organization, what would you say? In other words, what's your organization's elevator pitch? Um, it is, I believe, the only question that is located in eligibility questions that counts towards the application, because you can see right here, it talks about that it counts under the artistic and cultural vibrancy category uh, for the reviewers. So they're all basically all the same. They're still the same number. There's only 11 of these questions. Um, it, it's, it's quick zip, 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 done. Um, you know all the answers ahead of time about what category you're in, uh, that your headquarters is located here. Um, if you have a DBA to fill it in, it's all the same. Anybody have questions about the eligibility section? No, my, 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 my font is probably really small, so I apologize. Alrighty, we're going to move on to the application questions. Sorry, I'm showing the back end. Um, this is probably 1 of the areas that we use the feedback from the focus group that came in, which we were very appreciative of to try and clarify the questions. Um, we didn't come up with any new questions. We just tried to explain things a little bit better and more clearly. Um, an example is there's a question on here that talks about um, a partner. So uh, number five here, you know, a strategic partnership can help deepen and enrich the organization. Describe how one partnership from last year has helped your organization better achieve your goals and mission. Um, and when we, um, we did that, we did some help language that says, in this instance, we're not looking for a paid vendor. We're not looking for that type of thing. We're looking for a partnership that helped you um, in the arts, um, your goal and mission, at, whether it's in your discipline or um, that kind of thing. So that's when we tried to clarify. Um, <clears throat> we were also asked to clarify the word, what does vibrant mean? How do we prove that we're vibrant? And what does impact mean? How do we prove that? Or making in fact, what kind of impact stats and information would you like to have? And so we did clarify those um, <clears throat> questions as well um, in the application, just talking about this is how we see impact. Um, this is how um, uh, we would like you to, to respond to this question. So hopefully it helps in your responses, not that your responses weren't excellent already, 
but just people were asking for some more assistance. Um, so number three is tell a story from the past year of a moment when it was clear your organization positively impacted the community. Um, and so we talk about things like uh, through a narrative outcomes or metrics, demonstrate how your organization has helped achieve ZAP's mission. I think people were looking to understand that part of it. Uh, uh, provide a compelling reason why taxpayer dollars should fund your organization. So like, how did you make the community better off? Um, anyway, those are the kinds of things that we wanted to clearly, more clearly articulate in, um, in the application based on the focus groups um, feedback to us, which we really appreciated a ton. Um, around diversity, I know diversity, um, DEI was a conversation at the session um, this year, and even though Zach doesn't get involved in politics, we did um, want folks to know that we still are looking for a few of those things. So, um, you know, explain your organization's efforts to expand your audience to ensure you are serving all residents and visitors in Salt Lake County. So we ask you which communities you serve. This is a question that's been there for quite some time. We just slightly changed um, the language around it to talk about all folks looking in the different categories. So um, there's still the same number of questions. Um, not any new ones, um, you know, what have you accomplished? What are your challenges? Um, how, will you use, how have you used your funds over the last uh, year related party transactions? So um, any questions on any of the, these questions so far in the system? Um, Samantha, one question yeah, I yeah. have on on just the the totality of the application, it's very helpful <clears throat> as a, as a grant writer to have a PDF of the current application questions, and if possible, character links for each in a PDF that we can then cut and paste into a Word document so that we can create the document in Word separately and then upload those questions because they're going to be reviewed by a lot of folks, you know. Um, I don't know if that's something that can be done next year, but it is just very helpful to have a, the ability to PDF the application and then share it with people because there are different people that need to input some, on some of these questions. So um, maybe for a future. Thing. Uh, I don't know um, if we even talked about that in the focus group. But well, we, um, so I'm glad you brought that up. But I, I'm glad you brought that specific example up. Um, yeah, I'm sorry. Kelsey. Like oh, go ahead. Go ahead. Uh, Samantha, um, I wonder if we could use the print preview button. Does that print it yes. without answers and yeah. create a quick PDF for ourselves? Yes. Excellent. So, um, this is a hidden gem. Thank you for bringing it up. It brings the eligibility questions. For you, oh, fabulous. And then, sorry, I'm going fast. I don't like to make anyone sick. Uh, then it goes into the application questions and it looks kind and it gives you the percent even of which category it lands in. It gives you the help language. I'm not seeing a character count, though. Um, I think that would be helpful to have a character count. Yeah, it would. If if that's something we could okay. add for a future application, that would be super. Because okay. I know that the character counts usually don't change much from year to year, but when they do, <laughs> it can yes. get, can get tricky. <laughs> so what I did is I oh, my computer screen is not going to like me. One sec. Okay, that's better. So what I did to get here um, is I hit the print preview. You see this third button? I don't know if it's exactly the same in yours, but you can hit the print print preview, and then you can save as PDFC up here, and then it pulls it up for you, and you can get in there. Um, but I want to go back to the first question. Thank you for Susan for saying for sharing that. Um, is um, 
one of the things Kelsey is going to be doing is she's going to take some of the feedback that the group gave and we're going to create kind of a guide or a manual um, that you don't have to be in Zoom grants to have everything, but it's kind of a guide and a manual about what I'm talking about today. Not all the fluff stuff about Zaps basics and your cycle as much, but it'll be more about the application itself. And so that's one thing that we there used to be a guide years and years ago, like a you know, 16 page guide or something. And then it just kind of turned into the guide um, or the way that you're supposed to answer questions is within the Zoom grants application itself. Um, what we got from the focus group is that we need to pull that information out, if you will. <laughs> I mean, keep it in there, but pull it out in regard to creating a manual or a guide that you can look at to understand the grant. And within it, I think having a copy PDF um, along with the character allowance is something that we will do. Um, I don't know if we'll get it done this year, but we're gonna work on it um, right starting in June. Um, and so, yes, it would be for next year. We may even get that back to the focus group and ask them, is this kind of what you're looking for? Is so, there a guide to the Excel file too for the financials? Uh, the guide, again, same situation. The guide isn't within it. so. I don't know if I have a QE pulled up right now. Me, um, I thought I had a QE, a blank QE. Let me see if I can go in and get a blank QE really quick. Um, it's under documents or settings. I feel like it's under settings. It is. Okay. It, it's under settings. Yeah. You're right. Okay. Give me uh, one sec. Um, while you're finding that, one, one note, um, Janet, is that Zoom grants tends to be a little finicky when using a Word document or a Google document and then copying, pasting text into it. Sometimes it doesn't uh, like that and you'll have a saving error where after you copy and paste the text, it'll say saving, but it never fully saves. Um, so we usually recommend that app applicants type in their answers into Zoom grants and then copy paste to a Word doc outside of it if needed. Um, oh, got it. I just, okay. I just wanted to note that um, so that way you don't run into any kind of tech issues. Yes. Thank you. That's an excellent point. And I have had that problem before. <laughs> you know, it's it's excruciating. It's excruciating. We get we get the archaicness of it and we apologize. But yes. Um if you look at my screen in a QE sheet, um the guide was put into the QE sheet. So there was a separate guide previously, but as rules came and things changed, they put them directly in here. So it's got the instructions, it's got the definitions like a glossary. Um, it's got the breakdown of what's not qualifying, um, a summary definitions page for each one. It's like doing your taxes, like the answers are on another page, but it's within the same document. No one wants to hear what I just said about <laughs> it's like, um, there's extra fields to put additional information, um, explanations and so on and so forth. So really consider um, this to be the guide uh, for the QE right here. But I don't, I, did I answer that question well enough for you in regard to doing the QE worksheet, having definitions and explanations, a guide, if you will? Yeah, yeah I guess it, I just have to try and figure it out. Um, I'm happy to chat offline too. Um, if you okay. want, uh, we do tech visits all the time. We usually do these quick WebEx 30 minute calls all the time for that particular okay. organization. We do them super regular. Um, All right, that so that would just, probably help yeah. me out a lot. If you send me some dates and times and the topic and maybe questions, okay. we'll just set it up and get it done right away. It's not right. a problem that, at all. That will help since I'm kind of, I mean, last year I came in and the the Excel sheet was already filled out. Mm -hmm. And so I was just submitting everything. But this year I've got to do it. And so it's kind of like, yeah. If you need former QE sheets beyond 24, you can pull up your 23 one. Um, okay. And if it's not in there for some reason in 23, I don't know why it wouldn't be, but if it's not, let me know. We, we've got them from our CPA. We can send anybody their QE sheets revised okay. or not revised at, at any point in time. All okay. right. Um, <clears throat> that was a quick overview of um, the application eligibility questions, the questions themselves, uh, where the documents are located. Any other steps in Zoom grants before we move forward to move on to the additional uh, data questions? Okay. So, as you know, question 15 asks you to go your, do your additional data sheet. Here's the link right here to go do your additional data. 
And I've got that pulled up. Let me try the right one. Here we go. This is what your 25 one looks like. Again, very similar to previous years. We did cut a couple questions. Let me clarify a couple questions and I'll point those out for you. Um, we asked about the number of volunteers, um, which we have done in the past, but this year we're instead of, uh, we asked for hours if you're able, if you can, and that's okay if it's an estimate. Um, we also clarified that as volunteers, um, we consider your board, if it's a volunteer board, that they can be counted. I don't know if people always count that or not. And so we wanted to put that in there that, you know, that that is a good thing to do is go ahead and count those volunteer hours that your board does at board meetings, as well as other uh, retreats, trainings, strategic planning, those kinds of things. We'd love to get that information. Those are two of the areas. We also took out virtual events, um, virtual events, just um, unless somebody really wants to put them back in, which we're fine with, um, it's really uh, just in person. So um, we didn't change a lot here um, in any of these um, beyond that council district, number of board members, all that good stuff. It's it's all the same as it was. Um, does anybody have any questions regarding the QE? I want to point out that in Zoom grants, um, under your resources, where it has the documents, under your resources, but it's got it under settings for me. So, sorry, under resources button, I want to show you that there is a document that you can use because um, your additional numbers worksheet doesn't let you save. So, when you're in here filling all of this out, if you have to stop and get information and you want to come back, unfortunately, it will not save the inputs that you have put in, uh, which isn't great. So we've created this document um, here that should help you fill in the numbers, complete the worksheet, and then go back into the smart sheets to take care of it. So where is that? Can you navigate to that one more time, please? Yeah. I'm so sorry. Can you navigate to where that was located? When oh, time? sure. I'm sorry. Okay. So, um, I want to close this. Sorry, my tab is my Zoom Grants tab. There we go. Okay. So, mine looks a little different than yours. Up here in your tabs, you have a tab called the Resources tab. Go ahead and click on that Resources tab, and it's going to give you this same list as I have right here. Okay, exact same order even. This one right here where it says additional data numbers worksheet. Go ahead and click on that and download it and complete it. And then spend your time going over here to get it done. Uh, we did change one thing. We finally put these in the alphabetical order. I know I apologize for years before we, that for some reason before us, we didn't know why, but they weren't in alphabetical order all the way and it made it more of a uh, pain. And so we have put those in alphabetical order. That way you can get all this information that you need and then go jump in here and put it in. Uh, one other item I wanted to show you in Zoom grants. these documents that are under the resources tab um, scoring criteria might be something worth looking at um, i don't know it's the last we haven't done a lot it's been old since 2018 we we haven't revised it a lot but just it might be worth a refresh um, for you to do just a thought and then if you have any zoom grants issues there's a tips and tricks right here um, but again if you want to call us we do these tech calls that are 30 minutes webex and we just talk about your questions or topics or walk you through something or explain anything. This is kind of a, a little bit of an FAQ, but um, let us know if you have any issues and we'd be delighted to set up a tech call at any time with you. So um, it looks like uh, Susan's got some questions. We want to take a little pause uh, and see if we can answer those. 
So at the top of the application questions, um, it says um, video sample slash artifact mm -hmm. optional. Mm -hmm. um, is that just a web address that you want us to put in there to YouTube or a Vimeo if we have something to provide? Or what are you looking for in that section? Because it's a character count. Um, so, oh, sorry, go ahead. Sorry, 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 go ahead, Diane. Um, uh, so in the, in the little button that's next to it, that says show hide, it has some, um. Help language there, I wish it was. Default to just show, but for some reason, it still requires to. Would you show mind pulling hide. that up Daniel? Would you mind pulling that up? Um, to show them. I just want to make sure they have a visual in case people don't have their zoom grants up right this minute. Yeah. Um, so right here, the video artifact sample. If you click that show hide button, it'll have some um, help language here. And what we're uh, hopefully looking for is an embed code, uh, which is slightly different than a URL um, or a Google Drive link or, or whatever may have you. Um, but those are super easy to grab. Um, if you ever go to YouTube and um, you need to sh like you want to grab the embed code. All you do is click share, and it says it's that first option that you have. Um, and so you click on this, and there's a little button that says copy, and it copies all of that text for you. And so you can go back into your application, and you paste it, and it saves. And then when you reload, this is what it looks like. So it puts it into your application and that way the board doesn't have to leave um, their review site to be able to access your video. Um, and they really do like seeing these. So highly recommend that you upload a video. You don't have to, but definitely recommend that you. Would anyone else like Daniel to do that one more time? Yeah, was that too fast? <laughs> Is that the same for Vimeo? Vimeo has a similar option, yeah. So it's not quite quite as uh, quite the same, but um, it there is still a share and then embed code option in Vimeo. Okay. Um, any other questions related to the application on Zoom grants, the additional data sheet? Okay, great. All righty. Well, I'm going to share real quick and just finish up. Give me one second. I need to grab my PowerPoint. Okay, there we are. All right. Okay, so we did uh, the demonstration of the application, but again, please let us know if we can help you in any way. Find old stuff, get the current stuff up and running. Just let us know. It's our role. <laughs> Uh, again, this is just the additional data sheet. We, we just plugged an old one in here just for an example. Okay. We didn't talk about ownership and access, but um, there is someone that owns the application um, and they can do everything. They can view and edit every section. Um, and they also have the, the uh, I guess you'd say permission or authority to allow others to have access. Um, and those that need access are called collaborators. And so they can um, put those in there and help take care of that. Um, and collaborators, um, they can do um, viewing and editing access under the summary tab. Um, again, collaborators, some people have numerous collaborators and that's just fine. Sometimes it's board members, sometimes it's staff, sometimes it's other folks and, uh, like a volunteer. Um, I don't see too many third party like accounting firms or anything or attorneys in there. I, I don't think I've seen that, but uh, you're welcome to add as many collaborators as you like or remove um, collaborators. Um, there is one thing is uh, if you need to change the owner uh, of the application, unfortunately, you have to email Daniel and I um, and Daniel and I have to email Zoom grants uh, to change that main owner of applications. So. Um, that one, um, 
is something you may need help with and we're happy to do so. Um, again, a collaborator can't just jump in and do it themselves. They have to be invited um, and they're given some permissions to do certain pieces of it um, and they have the editing privileges and then it will show up when the collaborator logs in and they'll see whatever year you gave them. So if you need help with your 20, this 25 application by looking at your 24, you'll want to make sure that you've got them on both of those. Um, Daniel, do you have any other things you want to add about um, access and ownership? That might be helpful, or does anybody have any questions on ownership and access in Zoom grants? Um, I, the only thing I was going to say, yes, is so it, some of you mentioned you're you're newer to your organization, or you're helping out for the first time this year. If you need access, just reach out to us or message me in the chat right now, and I can help uh, start getting that set up because all of you have, or all of your organizations have previous applications that are in Zoom grants. So it's less about you creating a new account. It's more about getting you access to your organization's overall stuff. So, yep, just message us. All righty. Applications are due May, um, <laughs> I said May 1, how horrible. Sorry, 31, please forgive me. I, they are not due on May 1, they are due on May 31. Um, I will make sure I change that before we send this out. Um, but they're due on May 31. It is a Friday um, at 5 p.m. We do not accept late, late applications. We didn't have any late applications last year, and we didn't have is any the year before. Is that the 30th or 31st? 31st is a Friday. Okay, because you said 30th or later, so I didn't Oh, know. my gosh, you guys, I'm terrible. It is the 31st. It is a Friday. Okay. Um, okay. We didn't have any late applications last year. We didn't have any late applications the year before, so I'm not too worried, but just so you know. If you feel like you're stumbling or having problems, it's good to let us know at least a week or two before the applications due that you really need some help um, or you're stumbling on some things and we are we're, we're ready to help. Um, we do send a lot of information oops, out to you um, from Zoom grants. And so we really need um, you to whitelist. Um, we send things out like, hey, the board's approved you preliminarily, but we're waiting for council approval. Hey, council's approved, um, or here's your contract. Um, and so please make sure if you're new and haven't done this before and you're the one or someone, one of your collaborators is listed as receipt, needing to receive notices, please, please whitelist this because we do send a lot of communications as the process moves forward through the Zoom grants uh, platform. Um, again, you might want to save your responses and any of the work that you do outside the Zoom grants platform just to have documentation of your own might be a good idea. Um, if you again, Daniel just offered, if you can't access previous years, please let us know. We're happy to walk you through that. Um, add your collaborators really early. And then I mentioned the Zoom uh, grants tips and tricks application, or excuse me, document that's in the uh, application resources library. So feel free to do that. Okay. I'll finish up and then we'll do some questions at the end. Um, please, please uh, sign up for our newsletter. If you're not, we're trying to make them more robust. We're trying to provide more of a bigger um, group or audience to it. Um, it's not just to grantees anymore, but it's to others as well. Um, our platforms we spend the most time on are Instagram, probably, um, and Facebook. LinkedIn is new to us, but we are starting to put things on LinkedIn. So we don't have a lot of followers or folks on LinkedIn. So if you haven't had a chance to link up with us on there, that's where we put some things that like we have a big conference or big meeting, um, uh, some education from Kelsey's impact program, and of course, job announcements um, we put on there. So love to have you be a part of that. Um, remember, this is the newsletter sign up. It looks just like this on our new website. Um, that you can go ahead and sign up for uh, the newsletter. We call it the grantee newsletter, but it's it's really more than that. The summer passport is coming up. Um, we would really like uh, more tier ones and zoologicals to participate. We'll be sending some information out about um, more flexibility in the ways that you can participate. In the previous year, there's been very limited ways that you can participate just by putting your events on a calendar. We're now offering um, much more around donating prizes. Um, if you want to be not just a destination to have on the calendar, but also if you want to be a distribution site, if you want to be the place that people come to pick up their passports, you can sign up for that now. 
and then the party. So the final party at the end of the summer. Um, we have, uh, and this is old, but this year it runs, this is last year's uh, passport. It runs June 1 through June 20 or August 23rd this year. And the big party is on August 23rd. And we're seeking grantees who want to have a booth, an interactive booth. Last year we had um, 10 grantees come because it was our first year to ask that. And it's really exciting um, to be able to offer it more. So we had 20 booths in all, 10 from the county and 10 from grantees. Um, that's something new. We'd love to have people come join. Um, Ballet West did a very cute thing with bringing um, some actual dancers that were able to be in front of the booth and get people engaged. Um, I think Hill Center Theater did an activity that wasn't a table, but a game. Um, and so it was, it got them a chance to speak with the public. Um, so anyway, you'll receive information. Um, again, it begins on June 21. Um, it ends on August 23rd. And this lunch and learn, uh, we're having its uh, lunch and learn about two things. One is um, the summer passport program, but the other is summer happening for ZAP that we want to talk about. Um, is the reauthorization. So if you still have reauthorization questions about how we're supporting it, what the plan is, um, things are gonna start going probably by the end, and we've already been ramping up, as you know, since last fall, um, but this spring, late spring, early summer, things are really gonna get going, not just for us as staff at ZAP, at the county, but also the third party. So as you know, the tier ones come together and have a, I guess it might be called a preservation committee that you all team up together and put some dollars forth for a campaign. Um, we'll be talking a little bit about that campaign as well at this lunch and learn. Um, it is virtual, it's only an hour. So we'd love to have you join um, to talk about the passport, but also reauthorization questions and activities. We're gonna give a big update on that as well. Um, one of them will be about the impact um, report or study that uh, Chem Garden Policy Institute's doing. Okay. Um, please remember to invite advisory board members and elected officials. Um, this is really easy. This is uh, under the resources tab. And then you can decide which group you want to invite or maybe both. So please, if you have any trouble ever inviting folks, then you can always send an email to our team and we can get it out. We try to let board members know to let uh, organizations know that they're there, but, but they don't always. We'll be looking for um, branding, and acknowledgement of ZAP at those events that we go to as well as the board members go to because we are in a reauthorization year. This is what it looks like once you get there to invite somebody. It's pretty simple, not a long form to get invitations out to our board um, or to the county. Uh, two quick things and then we'll finish up. Um, we need to talk about payment works for just a second. Um, I'm gonna let Daniel take that bad boy because it, it is a bad boy. Don't tell me why I said that. One quick um, question. Is this gonna be yeah. taped so that I can get it to some of our other yes. staff members? Yes. Okay. Um, and then the other part I wanna speak about is the reminders I sent you. Um, I had sent you some reminders that um, we needed some things done. Um, as it come, pertains to the um, QE worksheet. And I know I sent everyone an email. If you did not get that email, let me know. But basically it was an email uh, first sent on March 28th, then a reminder was sent again on the 9th, happy to resend. But this just talks about the salary cap increase again. That's important, salary cap hasn't changed in a long time. And it went from 97,280 to 109.620. Um, Revised QE sheets, again, if you have got one, you need to use that revised one, not your original one. Our accountant would really, really appreciate it. Site visits, again, we'll be conducting those over the summer through June through September. I'll be contacting you probably the first week of June uh, to make that initial engagement between you and your lead reviewer. The maximum QE was changed last year, but just a reminder that that's at 390,000. Um, Financial health test, question number six. I should probably just pull my screen up and share. I'm going through this really fast. Um, the financial health test, um, number six, used to not be in there during COVID. Um, and so uh, that's been put back in uh, as of last year. So in 2021, 22, and 23, um, this 
um, going this round. Hopefully we don't have anybody that has this worry or anything like that, but it has been put back in and is being scored. Um, if you fail the financial health test, um, we need a plan, a financial plan from you that will be part of your application the following year so that the lead reviewer can see that you do have a plan and that we'll be looking for an update of the plan. So if you failed the financial health test last year, um, I provided the new guidelines, revised guidelines to turn in that failed financial health test uh, improvement plan, health improvement plan. Um, and uh, you are due to have a, a update or a progress report with this application. I've already contacted those grantees to let them know. Related party transactions. Uh, not a lot of folks have this, but there are a couple folks that do this and they do it each year, which is totally fine. But the one thing that, that the board is really asking for, and so is the CPA, is provide all documentation. So if your board approves a related party transaction, we need to either see a transcript or something from the board uh, saying that this was okay to do. That's an example of the paperwork we need to have in. Again, acknowledgement of ZAP support at um, your functions, whether it's um, verbally or um, in writing with a, with a banner or sign um, is what people will be looking at just because this is a, a year of um, the authorization happening. So those are remi the reminders that I have and um, we can have questions too, but Daniel, let's just hit on payment works real quick. Um, would you mind doing yep. that? Yep. Okay. So I think all of you at this point are familiar with payment works. It's the new ish portal that the county is using for payments. Um, all of you are onboarded and registered within the system. There was a um, issue with the uh, recent payments. Um, payment works has some kind of feature where it says early pay. And um, if you opt into it, it, it says that you'll get your payment earlier than when you normally would. Um, I'm not sure what the official language is, but that wasn't an option that was supposed to be available to grantees just because um, when we issue your payments, it's it's due upon receipt. You're supposed to get them as soon as possible. Um, but that option did appear to you. And so for a while we were sending out messaging, do not opt into early pay because that, that feature takes a percentage of the payment. Um, we have now been working with the accounts payable office at the county and that early pay option shouldn't appear to you anymore or ever again. If it does though, do not opt into it. You can still have direct deposit but not have early pay and you'll still get your payment um, as soon as we issue them. Um, so yeah, do not do not do early pay. It, it should be resolved. It shouldn't be um, an option to opt into for you. But if if you see it or your finance team or, or whoever uh, does end up seeing that option, do not opt into it. And apologies for anyone that has already experienced some, some grief about that. We did get it reversed, but um, yeah. So that's everything on payment if, works. If someone accidentally um, uh, clicks it, please let us know so we can get you your money back, get you a refund. But mm -hmm. ZAP, ZAP dollars are paid as soon as we invoice. There's no waiting period. Um, the early pay is more for other departments that pay like 30, 60, 90, whatever. Um, but for you, we, we, we want that not showing. We want them to pay you upon rec uh, receipt of their invoice. So yeah. Um, are there any other questions I about, I, I see Cheryl's got one, but besides that one, is there any other questions that folks want to ask? Well, um, we'll answer Cheryl's in a second, but any other questions to ask about the application or the process or reviews? Okay. Sh Cheryl, um, reconciliation letter. Um, why, why do I not? Can you ask the, the question again? What, I'm, what am I missing? So the so, reconciliation so, letters oh. are going to be sent out. Um, oh, you're yes. getting your final oh. payment this month. 
Um, and so you'll get a letter along with the payments. Our, our fiscal office is, is finishing up that process right now. And so you're receiving your final payment um, before this month is over. And then, yes, the letter will be sent out through Zoom grants, just like it was last year um, with your, it'll have your final payment number, whatever that final payment number is. And then it'll have your total award amount for 2023. Um, it'll have both in, in that letter and that'll be, uh, sometime this month. Um, cause you'll need it for the application and then you'll receive your 2025 or sorry, 2024 payment info, um, in May, June. So. Hope that answers your question, Cheryl. Sorry, Cheryl, that my brain was stuck in the QE. I was trying to figure out which get QE. If anyone needs the reconciliation number for 23, um, I should be able to get that for you. So if, if you, I did have, I know some people have some events and some things coming up that they really need to know. I don't mind. Um, I can bug fiscal for a couple of them if I don't bug too much. But if it's something you really need um, right away, just email me and I'll see what fiscal is willing to, what, what the processes they have done and whose they have done already. I know one of them I sent out already, um, but if you need more, uh, uh, to, to one grantee who needed it really badly, but if anyone else really needs their number, um, let me know and I'll see how far and request from fiscal what your numbers are for the end of the year. Otherwise, you're going to get your letter and your payment this month in April. Could I add a couple oh, yeah. things to, to some yeah. other stuff that you talked yeah. about before? Yes, yes, go okay. ahead. Um, about the summer passport, just for anyone that is interested, maybe um, one of the things that we're doing this year is we're expanding it to all ages. It's not um, just for kids this year. So um, if you have like, you know, shows coming up in the summer and, and you're just wanting to offer some kind of discount to be a part of it, like that would totally work for us. We're really hoping to get as many grantees involved this year as, as this year is a big year. Um, and we also have an informational session next Tuesday. It's the Zap Summer Happenings. Um, it's a virtual lunch and learn. So you can eat your lunch and listen to us talk about uh, the stuff that's happening that Samantha mentioned earlier. Um, and then also Samantha uh, showed those testimonials kind of earlier towards the presentation. If you're interested in submitting one, um, I just put a link in the chat for that as well. Um, we are collecting those so we can get them as a part of uh, all of our ZAP promotional stuff, especially throughout the, the spring and the summer. So um, we'd love to have those as well. And if you've already submitted one, then thank you. And if you want to submit another one, I won't say no. I always love getting photos and everything from you guys. So um, Council yeah. loves them too. When we, when we turn in the funding yeah. recommendations from the board, they love yes. seeing testimonials from our grantees as part of that package. They kind of expect it actually. So any help there would be great. Okay, we ran through a lot of stuff really quickly. So please let us know what we can do to help and assist and support you. Um, any last questions? Have a wonderful rest of your week and a fabulous weekend. Thank you for your patience. And again, please call us. We're excited to help everybody through the process. Have a wonderful day. Bye-bye. Thank Thanks, everyone. Thanks for joining. Thank you. Bye.